magnificent view behind me. We're here at Port St. John's. This is called Poonskop, a spot, spot a couple of uh, kilometers just north of uh, the river. And uh, we had some fantastic sardine action here this morning. Just not close enough, or small pockets coming in close enough, only with dolphins, not with any other fish. We threw some spoons, threw some uh, plugs and poppers, um, and didn't get anything. So currently I've got a shad out here on the side in the secluded bay. Um, so does Dean. We're looking for some edibles and all the drone anglers, every bait they drop in the back here on that sardine line where they moved through this morning and it was a massive shoal. I have to guess maybe two kilometer shoal that came through here and just dolphins, there were even whales, everything about. And uh, they leave a dead trail there of dead sardine and smell so all your sharks and all the other fish are falling. So every drone bait so far gets uh, Get smacked, they've lost five fish already, the guys. And then Linton got the gray shark that got taxed. While he was fighting it, not long, a much bigger, either Zambezi um, or a big gray shark took a big chunk out of it and he just dragged it in. So the guys are taking some of those fresh shark chunks and, and dumping it in the back. Because um, obviously with a sardine run, everything is in, in a frenzy, in an absolute feeding frenzy. So they start eating each other, I can bet you. And there's pieces of chunks of of uh, other fish that got eaten that's that's also in the water the blood's in the water so the fish will pick up a lot of that obviously if you can get fresh sods you're in on in for the money even you on the side you'll do well on the shad and all your edible fish here on the side um, you'll have much better results than having frozen or other sardines but uh, we're gonna persist for a while myself and Dean look for an edible yeah at this stage probably only a garrick really um, because uh, because the water is crystal clear as well so not much chance of a cop but this is a very popular cop spot here as well it's protected with a reef there so we just behind it we've put the live bait so that the sharks can't get to it because we're fishing straight fluorocarbon the siglon fluorocarbon um, which obviously betters your chance in this crystal clear water for a gary also spin if you see with this time of the year you must have your spinning gear yeah Salt is 12 foot 6 and uh, 11 foot 6, I've got both here. One for spoon, one for big plugs. And when those pockets of salts come in, you want to get to them and you want to see what game fish is there because there can be anything. It's really, it's a really exciting time of the year when you see them like this. That's gone dead now, the, the sardines is gone. Um, it's, I think, 11 o'clock low and now we're at about half past nine. So in essence, even these live shads we've got out, I've got better hope as soon as the tide can turn and starts pushing again then I think there's a chance for a Garrick uh, but we'll give it a shot I didn't even bring much shark traces and stuff because that was not the objective we came here to look for some edible fish um, but if it carries on like this or the drone eggs going then I think you won't have a, a, a option but to 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 put some shark baits out um, there's been some big bites which bit off the 200 pound steel and earlier with the smashes and stuff there were big fish around so yeah really in, in south africa probably if you can ever make it through to a sardine run when it's happening like this now just to put you guys in the picture the sods we weigh down about two three four hundred k's north of us the sods was oh, got netted yesterday on about five six different spots on the natal south coast we weigh down in transkai at port, port st john's and uh, these pockets of sods right through but just out of casting distance in most cases and that's why the guys go with the net in the boat they drag the nets around them and they pull them to the beaches when that happens it's not a bad spot to fish that night if you can get your hands on some fresh sods and put it out for the carb and the flat fish all your slower fish that's following that sardine trail and picking up all the bits and pieces that's that's left behind a lot of dead sardines stay behind if you look at the speed and the ferociousness those dolphins feed they don't pick up any dead bait they just focus on that shoal and they hit it and obviously if it's still mid water dropping they'll pick it up but once it hits the bottom i'm sure they don't even care about that they stick to the fall uh, to the shoal of, of sardines and they're very coordinated they're really really very coordinated but yeah enough talking now let's see if we can uh, get some more action here Oh, it's been a quite an eventful morning, some sad action. We didn't really get much. I've got a live shad out there, waiting for maybe a possible gay or a cop. And then Linton had a bonnie out, and then he got that gray shark that got taxed. So, uh, 
we did come for edibles, but uh, obviously, you know what they say, catch what's biting. So I'm gonna make up, I haven't come prepared to fish for an edible. I'm just making up a, a trace, a throw bait trace for, try and throw a whole chocker. Just putting some wire, I've got 200 pound cable here. Uh, fish mate cable, carbon coated cable. I've got two Levino hoodlums. And uh, I'm gonna make a full metal jacket and throw a, throw a whole chocker. I think what's important when you're making this whole chaka throw bait is that uh, you, you have an idea of how long you want to make your trace. So there's the chaka. You want to try and keep this, uh, this chaka frozen when you throw it. So this one's semi, so hopefully I can get it done quick enough. I'll put it back in the box. So obviously you're going to measure up your, your chaka. So that hook's going to go on the head and that one's going to go at the back. So you need to tie your second hook here. And then we Get your second hook in. Okay, so we have the point of tying. Just there. Okay, so that's gonna be the length of that, that whole chocolate. So you want your one hook at the bottom and your one hook there at the top. All right. And then we're gonna snell the second hook. Two hundred pound cables is easy to work with. Because it's, it's obviously quite heavy. Okay, I'm just gonna put this chocker away quickly before it defrosts. Okay, so then what I use. And that is heavy, our local terminal is close here. Is this little uh, T bead? That's obviously a stopper, and then I make a one mil knot. And I'll show you how we're gonna use this now. So my bag's in such a mess from the scramble this morning. Okay. You got a little power swivel that goes in there. And uh, comes out on that side. So you tie a seat on that power swivel and then you slide your, your cable through. Just gonna get the cable. So you go in on the one end. I cut this cable neatly. Come in on that end. So that's basically your your sinker that's going to slide up. Your limited slide type of FMJ. And then another power swivel. of eight on the power swivel. What's important when you're working at wire is that you set the knot uh, and then you slide it down and it doesn't pigtail the end of your wire. And, uh, Let's tie this off here. Okay, so what I then do is I just measure up my, my I wanted to basically my bite back is that then I'm gonna just peel off the coating here a little bit. And then make a figure of eight with one more nylon as a stopper. Guys use crimps, which, which also works, but I just feel, uh, you know, with the crimp, there's a chance that your wire can turn in and uh, get tangled on the crimp, and then it's, uh, it's got a sharp point that crimp, it's, it's metal as well. The one more works just as well, it doesn't slip and uh, it's not going to do any harm to anything. You get that in there and you've, you've got to pull this one more very tight. 
You're gonna lock that in. That's done. Here's my tray. So that slides and stops here. That's what it looks like. It's a FMJ, whole chocker FMJ. We're gonna rig the chocker up now. Um, then we'll, we'll, we'll throw it. With the swords being here, unfortunately the bigger fish were a bit further off and only the drone anglers really got all the action. So this was on that throw chucker. I'm gonna put some brakes there that I'm gonna get stripped. The old chocker Dean put out got him stuck into something really, really big. And eventually he got spooled to the drum. Linton was quickly on to another fish. Dropped another bunny about 200 meters out. Run fast again. And the fish took a little bit of land initially, but uh, it's coming quite easy now. Could be a bag. We have to just have to see as it comes. Hammerhead shop, got 15 minutes to land. Lovely flight, fight. Dean just got smoked just now while he was getting smoked. I went tight. So uh, we're gonna drop another bait now. We're gonna get this fish back in the water. Just get a quick measurement, get the fish back in the water, and uh, get another bait on. The fish seem to be biting very thick today, especially on the drop bait. So uh, um, work rate is key. We're gonna get another bait in quick. Shot. Thanks, guys. So that's, it's about now just after 10 I think, I estimate. You can see all the sods in the back, they're much further out than this morning. But they're moving up as well and you can see how fast they're moving. Um, you can see the dolphins are going wild on them there. And we're hoping they push them in a bit for us here. However, it's just been sharks on them. And I haven't switched to shark yet. Um, determined to get an edible. There's a lot of shark anglers here now that's uh, getting the sharks and targeting the sharks and hooking really really big fish as you saw with Dean um, and then a couple of smaller greys in between but the really big ones no one's had the luck to land one yet I had some interest in the live shed and unfortunately you didn't take it properly. Okay, so we uh, ran out of rods there. So what I did was I took my, I got my other Saltiga 50 HA on a, with a live bait. So I took my other 50 and I put it on a grinder rod and I threw a a bonnie head. So, uh, the fish now is taking some line. What you drop? Take friends on them. So, let's hope we can yeah. land this one. It's quite a bit of pull today, obviously, because of the sardine activity and the shoals that came close. So, there's a lot of shark activity at the moment. There's a lot of fish here. 
and uh, the drone guys are also getting some good fish there. The one guys on there with a solid fish. Uh, so yeah, looks interesting. Okay, that's a bit scary. Soon after Dean put out a bonnie head, and this fish was also too big to handle with all the sharks swimming around. They tend to swim into your line when you're fighting fish. So especially on the big sharks, it's a bit of luck that allows you to land these fish. Yeah, but uh, that thing was taking serious life. And uh, I think I'm almost empty there. Yeah? So we'll check, see. I have a feeling it put me off. Metano! Later, something took off with Dean's live shed at a speed, and soon mine as well. I wasn't sure if it was the same fish, but we both got wrapped around the reef before we even knew it. Later that afternoon, one of the drone anglers were lucky enough, after a good, good tussle, to land a beautiful grey shark of over 200 kilos. The guy just landed a, a grey up probably around 200 kilo. We got a measurement. Um, got some good footage of it. We're able to show you that just now. And uh, yeah, proper fish. Swam off strong. Everything's fine. Hundreds.